The Elementalist Scepter has received a rework and a lot of the skills are now better. So the Fresh Air Weaver build is going to be a little bit better. I wouldn't say a uh, Tempest is good for Scepter, but Catalyst with the Scepter is now a pretty good archetype. So in this video, I'm going to show you guys two Scepter Catalyst builds. So let's first start off by showing the new Scepter skills. So Flame Strike used to be really slow. Now it's really fast, so you can stack up burning pretty easily. Dragon's Tooth used to be a ground targeted skill where you would place it on a specific location and it would hit that location after a delay. Now it does the same thing, except it follows the target that you cast it on. So it's not a ground target, it's now a targeted skill. So it's a lot easier to land and it still does pretty good damage. Phoenix is the same, does a little bit more burning. And then you've got the water, the auto attack is just a little bit faster. Shatterstone now, instead of having a delayed effect, it now hits the target. It's still a ground targeted ability, so you gotta aim it still. So it's, you know, it's got some trade offs to it still. You gotta aim, and targets are moving. But if you have really good aim with the Shatterstone, what you'll do is you'll instantly chill the target and do a little bit of damage. And then afterwards, it will hit them again. So it's a lot more reliable to hit the first hit. And the chill is really nice because it allows you to hit that second hit more reliably if they don't dodge it. So the Shatterstone is more reliable and it is a nice lead into the Water Trident, which is one of the bigger reworks here. Water Trident used to be a ground targeted ability that did damage and healed, but usually you didn't want to use it on the enemy because you wanted to heal yourself or allies with it. So now it's a targeted ability, no ground targeting, so a lot less aim required. And what it'll do is it'll shoot at three targets, two targets near your target. So essentially three targets. And it will deal damage and will heal you for each target hit. So you don't have to choose between healing or damage. It does damage and then will heal you if it hits. Now you need to actually land it. So it could be considered worse sustain, but better pressure but in general, I just like it better because it gives you both if you use it ideally. And it will also do 50% more damage to chilled targets. So it works really well with Freezing Gust and now the Shatterstone. So you can do a pretty good amount of damage. Now, right now I'm on the Celestial stats, so you won't see like really high damage modifiers on that, but we're gonna show a Power Burst build and a Celestial build. So we'll get to that. And then the air attunement so now the air auto is pretty much the same but lightning strike will now give five stacks of vulnerability to the target and it will repeat that attack on two nearby targets so the lightning strike is now a little bit aoe it's better for like cleaving down state bodies because you don't have to choose who you're hitting you hit both and just in general it's nicer in those larger fights where you can actually contribute a decent amount of damage if you're hitting multiple things so a scepter ellie i think is going to be pretty good for a dps option and then blinding flash is now the same thing as lightning strike where it will hit three targets and it will blind as usual but it will also weaken the target if it has vulnerability on them so you always want to kind of like roll your fingers from two to three so that you give the vulnerability first and then if you hit them with blinding flash it will give weakness as well and then in earth the auto attack is the same but then you have rock barrier which used to give you toughness and now it's going to give you barrier and resistance which is a little bit over tuned and the activation of it is now going to be a lot faster which can do a decent amount of burst so really good skill and then you've got dust devil which used to just be a projectile blind now it's a ground targeted blind and it will pulse a cripple if the target is bleeding so it's it's cool how the scepter skills kind of like work with each other now like you need to bleed them to get the cripple so you use your your auto attack or your two skill to get the bleeding and then you'll get some cripple and the air is kind of like the two and the three work together so each attunement kind of works alone and that means you don't necessarily need to combo things to perform on this build which makes it a little bit easier 
but also it's just kind of nice because the thematic works a lot better. Like the chill of the two works worth the uh, the trident a little bit better as well. So yeah, the, the two and the three skills usually work pretty well with each other. So the first build I'm gonna show is a burst oriented catalyst. You're gonna get modifiers from the fresh air trait and the bountiful power trait. Every boon you have on you is gonna give you damage modifiers and you have lots of boons from being a catalyst and from the arcane trait line. So you've got like fury, swiftness, you've got protection, resistance, vigor, might. You can get resistance as well, resolution from the jade sphere. So there's a lot of boons and that means you can get a lot of damage and have that burst play style. Also, I go for staunch auras with this variant of the build, but you could go for sphere specialist if you wanted. I just figure that staunch auras is really nice because you're still a scepter Ellie, which is kind of squishy. So that's kind of like the idea here. You're going to be using the pack runes with full marauders because the extra duration on swiftness is pretty nice, but it's not that necessary. Mostly I want it for the extra damage and precision because you want to be critting because that helps you to do more damage and to get your fresh air to trigger to give you even more damage. So the sigils are air sigil and cleansing sigil. You could go for energy cleansing, but I like a little bit more damage, so I go for air. For the utilities, I take soothing water, which gives you a little bit more cleanse and not so easily preventable sustain, because if you're using signet of restoration, you need to be constantly doing damage to get that sustain. And if you use soothing water in your water jade sphere, it's a pretty low cooldown. So it's, it's a pretty reliable heal and you're not really that high on condition cleanse. You know, you've got cleanse on the four skill, you've got cleansing sigil, and then you've got soothing water. So that's, I mean, you got like a single one on uh, Phoenix as well. Not a lot of cleanse, so I like that the soothing water gives more cleansing. Then fortified earth is just really powerful. Make sure to use that at the beginning or the end inside your jade sphere so that you reduce the cooldown of that as well. Just a reliable block that's going to help you to not be so squishy as a Scepter Ellie. And then I like to use Arcane Shield, but you could use something like Mist Form as your Stunbreaker. Just use a Stunbreaker here, whichever one you want. I like Mist Form or Arcane Shield is a little bit more aggressive, but yeah, Arcane Shield is what I've been using on the uh, Burst Oriented one. And then Lightning Flash and Elemental Celerity recharges all of the weapon skills on your current attunement. And that's really good for the invulnerability on your earth attunement. Get a double invuln to help you survive. And you'll also get a an arcane shield when you use your elite skill because of the final shielding trait. So it's, uh, it's nice for a gale as well. You can double gale the target. If you really wanted to, you could double Phoenix, but I feel like it's probably better to use it with air or earth. How the build works is you want to do the Scepter 2 and 3 skill in each attunement, and then you want to go into the air attunement afterwards. So the 2 and 3 of the earth kind of work together, so you use them, and then you go into air, use the 2 and the 3, and if you swap fast enough, you'll get the fresh air bonus before the entirety of the two and three from the earth are finished casting. And you can also get the vulnerability from swapping into air because of the air trait here. You'll get eight vulnerability and another five vulnerability from lightning strike. So if you do it fast enough, the combo, then you'll get a lot of extra damage on your abilities. And of course you'll get the fresh air buff. So that'll essentially increase the damage of your earth abilities if you do it fast enough. And then you want to do it in water. So you want to do two, three, and then swap the air. And before the water trident lands, I've already got all those vulnerability stacks up. And you can see the water trident did 5,000 damage because I had chill on them, which gives the water trident more damage. And then I had all the vulnerability as well, which gave it more damage. So yeah, you want to be thinking about like a, essentially think of it as any non-air attunement, use the two and three. And then you want to swap into air really quickly and then do two and three again 
and in fire it's the same thing you put dragon's twos on them and then do phoenix swap into air before both of those skills land and get out some vulnerability one thing is you do want to land a critical hit so that you can swap back into air because if your skills haven't landed yet then you don't get a crit and that doesn't recharge your air attunement because fresh air requires you to crit so what you want to do is you want to have your your jade spheres out constantly because those can crit even though they do like no damage they still hit and that will recharge your air attunement so you kind of want to just spam out your jade spheres while you're doing your combo so for example i want to do a combo right now i'll do jade sphere and gale and then i'll do the fire burst and then i'll swap into air and do two and three and you can see that does a lot of damage so the idea is water two three air two three earth two three air two three fire two three air two three and then put in your utility skills and your four and five skills where needed the other build is going to be a celestial scepter catalyst with the rune of antitoxin energy cleansing you could go for a tormenting sigil if you wanted more damage but it's got a good amount of damage already so just decide on that if you want and the traits are very similar to the power build except you'll be taking the Evasive Arcana because you're not really a power build. It's like a hybrid build. So you get more value out of the dodge effects Which can also give you a lot of burning if you dodge in fire and then in the fire attunement The fire trait line the burning precision is going to give you a little bit more Burning duration, which is one of your main conditions and a chance to give burning You also have a chance to give other conditions in arcane. So these two traits are similar and then you've got the Condition Cleanse from Smothering Auras. You've only got one aura here from the Fire Shield, but you can also create auras from Catalyst whenever you do combos. So you can do a Blast Finisher here. You can do a Blast Finisher here. You can do a Projectile Finisher and a Blast Finisher here. So if you're just doing that in your Jade Spheres, you're getting auras and that's giving you cleanses. So if you really wanted to, you could go for the stability when you do that. But as I said, I like the boon duration. So this is going to give you two cleanse per aura because of the antitoxin rune. And you can also transmute your fire aura for a triple cleanse because that would be another added condition on that. So a lot of condition cleanse on this, especially because your heal skill is also pulsing condition cleanse. So it's pulsing two condi cleanse instead of one five times so it's really good condi cleanse and then the pyromancer's puissance is going to give you a lot more might which is great for hybrid build which this is so that's the traits for this one the only difference between this one and the power build is i go for the mist form instead of the um, arcane shield because it's a little bit more defensive and when you don't have as much stability it's going to be better for you to have the mist form so i like that instead and that's pretty much the same everything else so the play style is going to be different though from the fresh air build so your main damage is going to be from the fire auto attack but you can't just sit there because people are going to counter pressure you they're going to cc you and they're going to win trades if you're just sitting there doing nothing but burning them so you want to set up a situation where you can actually do that so generally the rock barrier is a nice little bit of an opener because it gives you the bleeding and it does a decent amount of damage. Even on a celestial build it does decent power damage and the bleeds there of course. So you can do the two and the three there. In air you want to be using your deployed jade sphere because this is going to give you quickness which will allow you to do even faster burning when you do go into your fire. And the duration of this boon is extremely long because we've got all those traits. So it's going to carry over. So you're going to go in, give yourself the boon, and you can see I've already got it back. So I'm giving myself even more quickness. And you want to essentially just spam your two and three just to get cover condies out there. And then gale them and use the fire auto attack. And while they're CC'd there, you're stacking up all those burns and it'll do a lot of damage. Then you can do your dragon's tooth if they're moving around too much or you need a kite 
and you can use your Phoenix as well. Flame Wall is not amazing, I'd rather just spam the auto attack. And the Fire Shield is your Condi Cleanse. Then in the two skill, you've got a little bit of power damage on this build. If you need to kite, you can use the, the Shatter Stone to chill enemies to get them off of you and use the Comet to, of course, daze them. So a little bit of self peel so you can get away and then get back to your combo of just either landing your Gale, you can recharge your Gale with Elemental Celerity into your Fire Burst and just auto attack like that and you'll do a lot of damage.